Good morning, church. Uh, maybe I shouldn't say good morning. I don't know when you're watching this. It is morning for me. Uh, maybe you're watching it in the afternoon or maybe before bed or whatever it might be. Uh, maybe I should say good night, church, because for some of you, you might fall asleep during this. Um, this morning, we are going to be starting a new series. This week, I was preparing a, a message and we were going to go through the book of First and Second Thessalonians. And I got the message prepared, and I just was not feeling it. I felt like it was something that God had laid on my heart. Um, but then when I was done, I felt like I was con more confused about what I was wanting to say. I felt like I couldn't get the right words. And so I've heard of preachers changing at the last minute um, what they've preached. And this has never been me. I've always um, just went ahead and done what I've prepared um, but for me, this week, um, I did make an audible, as we say in the football world. Um, it was a last-minute change of plans, and so um, we are going to be starting a new series this morning, or whenever you're watching this, on this idea of because I said so, right? And this, this is a phrase that many people use. Um, I'm sure you've used it before, especially with your children, and especially if you have, if you have young children, You've said this within the last few minutes, probably. I know I've said it recently, um, within the, the recent past. And so, because I said so, and we're going to be talking about parenting, um, although I know there's going to be several people who all of a sudden are going to check out because I said um, we're talking about parenting, or maybe you've even shut it off already. Um, hopefully not. But this, these principles we're going to talk about for the next few weeks apply to you, whether you're a parent or, or not. Um, because I promise you they'll apply to you. You'll see when when we go through that in just a minute. And I've heard people say, um, I'm done parenting, right? So maybe you are a parent and you're, you've raised your children and they're now out of the house. And you say, I'm done being a parent. I've heard people say this, which blows my mind. Uh, because you're never done being a parent. You're absolutely never done being a parent. The way you parent is different, for sure. Um, but if you've had children of your own, then you're never done being a parent. And so don't just assume that since I'm talking about parenting, it doesn't apply to you because I'm about to say something um, that I promise will apply to you. And it's a statement that I can say with certainty. And that, and that is this, you're either a parent or, so you're either a parent, you either have children of your own, or you have a parent, right? Um, we can all hopefully assume that there's nobody that's watching this um, that hasn't been birthed by a parent. And so you're either a parent or you have a parent. And so this stuff applies to you. And when I say that you have a parent, I do acknowledge and I understand that there are some who have parents who have been birthed by somebody um, and they don't want to claim them as their parents. I do understand that. Um, some people are rightfully so in, in thinking that and, and wanting to decide that for themselves because they've been, there's been a lot of confusion in, in families within the last um, hundreds of years. And so um, I do understand that and I acknowledge that. But there's still these things that we're going to talk about this morning apply to you. And for the next few weeks, they apply to you. I promise. So don't tune out. Don't check out. And that's what I want to say about that. And so most people, not all, most people, not all, at some point become parents in their lives, whether uh, that's in the future. Maybe you're a teenager and you're thinking, I'm not a parent. Well, you maybe will be a parent one day. Um, or maybe it was just a few years ago that you became a parent. You have young kids at home or you um, have older kids at home, whatever it might be. Or maybe it was 60 years ago that you had your, your children. Uh, you're still a parent for a lot of people. And so there are things that God's word points out. There are things that God's word points out to give us the right direction when it comes to parenting. And those, for those of you who have never had parents or not parents, you've never had children of your own. Um, this is a very real thing, and this is a, some, a struggle for some people, right? This is a real thing, and so this morning I'm not here um, to, to make that obvious to you. Um, you know if you don't have children, and, or why, or you, you know the situation. But here's what, what I want to point out to you if you don't have children, and this has been so true in my life, because I've had people like this in my life, and this stuff applies to you because God has called every single one of us God has called every single one of us to influence and to be an, an influential person in those around us, but especially in children, right? And so God has called us um, to pour out our love and to show the love of Christ to children around us, whether they're ours or somebody else's, and to influence those people. And we have a responsibility 
to become a parent-like figure in people's lives, right? People are watching, and we're going to talk about this a lot in just a few minutes. Um, but for example, my, my grandpa never had children of his own. Um, he is the stepdad of my mom. And, but he has been a parent to me in so many ways um, and a parent to so many other people in so many ways. And so he's a perfect example of somebody who maybe doesn't have their own children, um, but can have a huge influence on people. And so I'm challenging you if you're thinking, man, I don't have kids or uh, all of a sudden you're dwelling on that. Don't dwell on it. Uh, please don't dwell on it. But I'm telling you, you can have an influence and God has called us to have an influence on people and especially young people. And this is kind of why um, I have such a burden for youth and for uh, children. And so this morning, we're going to be focusing on a passage from Deuteronomy chapter 5. And we're going to look at verses 6 through 10. And this is where we find the Ten Commandments, right? The, the famous Ten Commandments that the, a lot of the world knows, even if they don't follow the Lord. Um, they know these, these principles and they, they try to follow them. A lot of people would say, oh, I live by the Ten Commandments. And they forget the rest, right? Um, and so we're going to look at some of these principles and we're going to look at how what this has to do with parenting and what I want to point out this morning. And so we're going to start in verse 6. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourselves an image in the form of anything in heaven above or on the earth beneath or in the waters below. You shall not bow down to them or worship them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, punishing the children for the sins of the parents to the third and fourth generation of those who hate me. In verse 10, but showing love to a thousand generations of those who love me and keep my commandments. And so here's the point I want to get across this morning. And this applies to parents especially, but this applies to all of us. The point is our sins have the potential to impact our children, and the generations that follow. Our sins as adults, as whether maybe you're a teenager now, our sins have the potential to impact the, the, our children or the generations to follow, even our children's children. And here's why. Because children follow not just what we say, but also what we do, right? And so when we say, because I said so, instead it should be like the, this phrase, um, do as I say, not as I do, right? Parents have said this. We've heard this on and on for years. Um, but instead of saying that, we should be saying, do as I do, right? And so not just because I said so, but because I'm doing it, you need to also be doing it. And so we're going to look at this passage um, a little bit more. In this passage, uh, this is Moses speaking to the Israelites, right, about what God told him when he was on the mountain. And he's going through these, what we call the Ten Commandments. And so the first thing you see is that God reminds the Israelites that he brought them out of slavery. We see that in verse 6. And I think this, this is kind of a side note, but this is so important, right? God, Moses is reminding, God's reminding Moses, but then Moses is reminding the Israelites what God has done, where God's brought them from. And I think that's so important for us to remember what God's done in our life. Don't forget what God's done in your life or where he's brought you from, right? He brought them um, out of slavery. And so God was reminding them of that and saying, hey, this is what I've done. Don't forget, don't forget to uh, celebrate what I've done. And so we, we have to do the same thing. He then tells them that there should be nothing before God in their lives and he tells them to avoid idolatry, right? The worshiping of other gods or choosing to serve anything other than God. And we do this all the time. We think, oh, I don't, I don't have other gods or shrines in my life. Uh, but the reality is we serve other things more than we serve Christ. And so that's our idolatry today. That's our, our worshiping idols. Then he hears our focus today in verses 8 and 9 and then kind of 10. Uh, he warns them. That the decision to worship anything but God will have long-term and lasting consequences for generations to come. So when, when we worship anything other than God, it has long-lasting implications for the people behind us, the people following us, the people looking at us um, and watching us. And so we need to consider what we're worshiping and consider what we're doing. And then lastly, for those that follow his commandments, he pours out love, right? He pours out love for those who follow and strive uh, to be like him and follow these commandments. And so this is a, a sobering moment for the Israelites, but it's also a sobering moment for us as we look through these things and we see these different commandments. Uh, but especially this idea that our sins, that the decisions we make, the choices we make, can affect our children, 
can affect their children, can affect their children, and it's a generational cycle, right? And so we see this idea um, coming out in Scripture. And so our belief in God and obedience or disobedience to God can have lasting effects, not only in our lives, but in our children's lives and our grandchildren's lives as well. Or if you're, like I said, if you're not a parent, for whoever's watching you, because people are watching you, and we're going to talk about that. So the first thing I want to point out this morning is that God does not unjustly punish children because of what a parent does. So God doesn't just punish children because of what their parent does. In the Old Testament, every it says this in Deuteronomy 24, um, I think verse 16, it says, uh, every person is to put to death for his own sin, is put to death for his own sin. And so it's not the sins of the father, the sins of the mother, um, but we're put to death for his own sin, for our own sin, right? And then uh, we see in the New Testament, in Romans 6, uh, 20 through 23, it says every person can be saved through faith in Jesus, right? And so just because we're affected, just because we're affected by the sins of our parents or the sins of the people that we've um, grown up under or witnessed or watched uh, throughout our lives, just because we're affected by those people um, doesn't mean that it's keeping us from heaven. It doesn't mean that, that it's going to destroy us, automatically just destroy us. We have no hope. But I'm telling you, it affects and afflicts. Our sins affect and afflict those around us, um, and especially our children, if you have children. And so God doesn't unjustly punish children because of what a parent does. Uh, but when when we act out in a stupid way when we sin uh, in front of people, in front of our children. Um, they often grow up seeing that and it affects them for generations, right? In scripture, we see a perfect example of this in Genesis 12, starting in Genesis 12, um, 10 through 13. And I would encourage you to read it. It won't be on the screen, I don't think. Um, but at some point, read it. And you see this, this passage of Abraham or Abram at the time lying about who his wife is, right? He says uh, he's worried that they're going to kill him because his wife is beautiful. And so they're going to kill Abram and take his wife. And so he actually says, hey, it's my sister. Um, and so he lies about who his wife is. And then later you see his son Isaac in Genesis 26, 6 through 7. You see his son Isaac doing the exact same thing, lying about who his wife is. Because she, again, she is beautiful and they didn't, he didn't want um, them to kill him and take his wife. And so you see this generational thing. Isaac saw his father do it. And so now Isaac's doing the exact same thing. And we see this all the time. Uh, how many of you have said or thought, I'll never do or never act the way my parents act. Or I'll never do what they did. Uh, and then years later, years later, we find ourselves doing or saying or acting out the same thing that we promised or, or we said that we would never do, right? I find myself doing this all the time. Um, there's not a lot of, there's actually hardly anything negative I could ever point out about my parents. Um, but there have been things I said, oh, I'll never do that with my kids or I'll never act that way or I'll never do so and so. And then I find myself doing the exact same thing um, that I said I would never do. And so we see this all the time. There's an article just released last year by the National Association for Children of Alcoholics and it says this, and this is kind of the, the drug and alcohol side of it. And we see this all the time. We see this all the time. Um, and maybe you've seen it in your family. But it, this article says this, alcoholism and other drug addiction tend to run in families. Children of addicted parents are more at risk for alcoholism and other drug abuse than our other children. Children of addicted parents are the highest risk group of children to become alcohol and drug abusers due to both genetic and family environmental factors and so this idea it runs in families right we've seen this and and people have studied this and and questioned like is this a generational thing is it a hereditary thing um it kind of is it's not necessarily um that you can't be redeemed and saved from those things because obviously you can and there's been lots of people who have been uh, but when you grow up in these environments when you grow up in sin uh, the sins of our parents, we often fall into that category and we end up doing the same thing. And so our sins affect the people who are watching. And so it's critical that as Christians, we take responsibility for our actions. It's critical that we take responsibility for our actions and that we find freedom from cycles of sin. And maybe it's addiction, abuse, greed, uh, sexual immorality, whatever it is, there's all kinds of any sin, right? We see the sins of our parents and it often overflows into the children's lives and they start uh, committing those same sins, 
right? And so we, it's critical that we stop those cycles and it's our responsibility as adults, as human beings, as Christians to stop that cycle in our life if we have it um, or if it's in our families or the generations. It's our responsibility to, to overcome those things and find freedom in Christ because it can trap families for generations, as God's word said. Uh, so many people went out of their addictions. I've never heard anybody say, oh, I, I'm glad I'm in this addiction or um, this is what I, I grew up knowing that I would be an addict. Nobody says that, right? Nobody says, oh, I wanted to be an addict when I grew up. Um, so many people went out of it, but they just don't know how. And so the first thing and the, the biggest thing, the only way, um, in my opinion, is to seek redemption from the Lord to seek repentance, right? To, to turn from your old, your old life, your old ways to new ways, life in Christ, um, to do that. Only, we can only do it with the help of Christ, um, but we can also seek therapy. People can seek medical help. Um, a huge deal for Christians and for everybody, not just Christians, um, is accountability, finding somebody you can trust and believe in and, and count on, and finding somebody that, a fellow believer that will hold you accountable in these things. And so these are practical steps that can help people overcome addiction. And it doesn't have to be a huge thing. It could even be um, eating too much, right? Overeating is an addiction. Food is an addiction. Um, and so whatever whatever these these sins of your life that could affect your, your children or the generations to come, um, think about these things. And those are some of the practical ways that you can overcome them. This, so the first thing is that God does not unjustly punish children because of the parents' sins. Uh, the second thing I want to point out is that you have influence. And this is kind of what I've talked about a lot already. Uh, whether you want to be or not, we're all in places of influence and authority over young people, over children. Um, not even young people and children. We're, we're an influence to people. Whether we're at work, whether we're at school, whether um, we're at home, no matter where we are, we have an influence upon people, right? And so it's our responsibility to think about that. It doesn't matter if you're a parent, a grandparent, a teacher, an aunt, a cousin, or a friend. There's someone, there's someone who's looking up to you, right? No matter what area of life you're in, there's someone who is looking up to you. And so this is what, what I want to point out. What you believe about God matters, whether you're obedient or disobedient to God, it matters. Not only for your, for your sake, right? For your own walk with the Lord, but it matters because it's affecting and afflicting people, right? And again, I'm not saying that they're doomed. There's no hope. There's no chance uh, when, we, when we do something stupid. That I'm not saying there's no chance for the people that are watching uh, because there is. There's freedom in Christ, right? But we need to think about the things that we do and how we live live out our faith. And so from the earliest ages, children begin observational learning, right? They observe something and they watch people around them and they learn from that. They develop habits, they develop um, characteristics and, and socially, um, they develop socially. And so they learn negative things, they learn positive things and they navigate the world around them. And so when they observe things, they adopt habits, right? We just said that. And so we've, we've all seen this. This is why your kid comes home from school and either does something or says something that clearly you've never taught them or you've never you've never showed them. And so you're wondering, man, I wonder where they learned that from. They learned it from somebody at school, right? From watching people. And we see this all the time. And this is also why your kid shows off a new vocab word, right? We've all, uh, I've even had my kids say things they shouldn't be saying that clearly I haven't taught them. Um, but they learn this new vocab word when they come home from the family reunion, maybe. Um, and so this is, they observe the things around them, they observe the people around them. And so again, this is our responsibility to think about what we're presenting, right? God calls us to be image bearers, a person who bears the image of Christ, who resembles Christ in the things that, the things that they do. And so it's important that we're, we're bearing the image of Christ to the people around us because people observe and they learn habits. And I don't want to be responsible for somebody learning a, a sinful habit from me, right? Be, just because they watched. Um, it's so easy for us to think, oh, our sin doesn't affect other people, right? It's easy for people say that all the time. Oh, it's just hurting me. No, it's hurting the people who are watching. And there are people watching, I promise you. And so that's, that's something we have to consider if we're living out our faith. And it's not just because I said so. Don't do this just because I said so, but do it because I'm doing it. Um, and hopefully we're, we're doing the right thing. The third thing I want to point out, and this is going to be quick, um, and because we've talked about this over and over and over, but forgiveness is key. 
right? We've talked about this a lot lately, uh, especially when we're when we're celebrating the death of Jesus on the cross. Forgiveness, right? That's what it that's what it brings to us. It brings forgiveness, and it's so key. There are few people who have made it to adulthood. If you're an adult, there's few people who have made it to, to adulthood without feeling the effects of their parents' failures, right? There, I mean, we see it. We grow up and we, we can see our parents' failures. And so guess what? Here's the problem. We fail too. We make mistakes all the time. And so forgiveness and modeling forgiveness is key for our families, right? I asked my, just this week, I asked Sam several times, and I always bring out Sam, but I, I also asked Finley several times to forgive me to, for the way I responded to something, for the way um, he asked me a question and I just had had enough. I was sick of hearing his voice. Um, maybe you would admit that too as a parent, um, but I was just tired of hearing him, and the way I responded was not fair to him. And so later I said, Samuel, will you please forgive me for the way I responded because I shouldn't have acted that way. Um, and so, and he said, yes. And so we, and that's just such a minor thing, but we have to model forgiveness and be an example of forgiveness um, to our families. If we're gonna take this idea of being an image bearer seriously, which we should because God, God talks a lot about it. Um, but if we're to take it seriously, we need to learn and practice forgiveness towards those who hurt us the most. And if you talk to any, any professional counselor, they can't tell you the exact scenarios because of confidentiality and all of that, but they would all agree, I'm telling you right now, if you talk to any professional counselor, they would tell you that the majority of their, their patients or clients, whatever you wanna call them, are there because of hurt and unforgiveness within their families. Think about it. I mean, if you've ever been to a counselor, which there's nothing wrong with going to a counselor, um, most of the reason, most of the time you're there, the root cause of that, once you get, once you get down through all the surface stuff, you're there because of a hurt or unforgiveness in your family. And so imagine how many people would be healed, how many people would be, um, spiritually and emotionally better if they modeled and practiced forgiveness within their, within their families. And so don't be that family. It takes work. It takes work to forgive. It takes work to, to deal with issues, um, but resolve the issues because it's worth it. And so the first point, I'm just going to go back through these real quick before we close. The first point is that God does not unjustly punish children for their parents' sins or their parent or what the parent does. And then the second thing I want to point out is you have influence. And this is for anybody who's not a parent. You're, you have influence. Uh, and then the third thing is forgiveness is key. And we're going to go through this for the next few weeks. Um, there's lots of things that are going to be uh, pointed out, and I, I'm really looking forward to it, and I'm excited about it. But today I want you to consider both the words and actions you display to your children and to the people around you. Are you living out your faith, or are you just saying, be, do this because I said so, because God's word says so, and then you do, you do whatever you want? Hopefully that's not you. Hopefully you can say, do as I do, right? Instead of saying the people that say, uh, do as I say, not as I do, right? You can say, do as I do. And hopefully you can say that. And so my goal this morning isn't to make you dwell on your failures or your shortcomings as a parent or to even make you start thinking of your parents' failures, right? That could, that's Satan working. Um, that could creep in and you start, you hear this message and you're like, man, that's why I struggle the way I do because my parents have done this and it's my parents' fault. It's, uh, I mean, we go on and on. Our minds go crazy, right? When, when we let Satan run with it. And so that's not my goal this morning. But my goal this morning is for us to think about how, how we bear the image of Christ to the people around us, to the people we influence, and for us to realize that the things that we've done, the things that our parents have done, the things that we're going to continue to do and our kids will do can be forgiven, right? Because God forgives us, which I'm so grateful for. And so we just need to take those things to the Lord. But I want you to understand that if we don't deal with our own sins and model Christ to those around us, but especially our children, if we don't do those things, our sins will have an impact on them for generations to come. Not, not they can, not they might, they will have an impact. Our sins will have an impact on those around us, the people that are watching. And so think about the image you're bearing and think about as you're stuck at home, think about whether you're modeling or what you're modeling to those around you, to your, to your husband, to your wife, to your whoever is in the house with you, to your kids, uh, maybe it's a grandparent, whoever it is, Think about what you're modeling to them and what you're, how you're influencing them. 
And so with that being said, I'm going to pray for us this morning. I miss you guys so much. Um, I'm hoping, which I can't, I can't promise anything, um, but I'm hoping that we will be able to meet together uh, to finish this series and things will start to look a little bit more normal um, because I'm so tired of this. I know you guys are too, um, but I'm just so tired of it. Uh, and so I'm praying that God will get things back um, to what we consider normal uh, sooner than later. And so I'm going to, with that being said, I'm going to pray. If you guys, as always, need anything, if you need any prayer, um, don't hesitate to call. I've heard from some of you this week and you uh, have been such an encouragement to me. Um, and I appreciate that. And again, thank you for watching. I know if you've made it this far, uh, then you're, you're here. And I appreciate that. Uh, because you don't have to be, and you could easily shut it off. You could easily uh, stop listening. You could do other things. And so thank you if you've made it this far for listening um, to not only me, but to God's word, because it's something God has definitely laid on my heart. Um, and so let's pray, and then we'll be done. Father, we thank you so much again for all that you do, even in this hard time. We thank you, uh, Lord, just as, as you reminded the Israelites and Moses um, that you'd brought them out of slavery. Thank you for, for where you've brought us from. Thank you for where you've brought me from. Um, and Lord, I remember how you've redeemed me and you've saved me. Um, and Lord, help us to all think about those things. And Father, as we, as we look at this scripture from Deuteronomy and these commandments and how, how our sins affect generations, Lord, help us to consider how we act and how we live um, at home, at, when we're at work, wherever we're at. Lord, help us to consider um, the image that we're bearing. Are we, are we bearing your image or are we bearing sin? Um, and, and people see sin in our life. Lord, help us to be uh, an influencer. We hear this term, especially um, in 2020, a lot. And, and so, Lord, help us consider what we're influencing. Help us consider um, the people we're influencing and just and whose image we're bearing, Father. And help it to be yours. Help us to be a light in a dark world, in a dark place. And, Father, we just uh, ask that you be with this church and be with everybody um, that's at home watching. Just help everybody stay safe and, and healthy. And, Lord, help us get together um, sooner than later and help things to get back to normal. And, Father, we ask all these things in your name. Amen. Bye, church.